Ugh, I am so sorry this video is late. I had some technical issues with this budget custom, uh, you'll see what I mean. But anyway, yes, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, doll customizers, young and old, I bring you... Another $40 budget custom. And this one is the Wish.com edition. Once again, I will put prices up on screen when I use a new item, and the total will be displayed at the end. Now let's get into it. We will start with the catalyst for pretty much this entire custom, this dress right here. Now this came from a listing that was completely at random. When I ordered it, I had no idea what outfit I was going to get, so I only ordered this one thing and waited for it to come in the mail and then went from there. And as you can see, this one's a little, uh, neon. I chose Catherine Demieux originally because, well, besides the fact that she's missing her tail, so she is a fine candidate for customizing, she is white, which meant that she would match whatever I decided to do with this dress. However, ironically, it was Catherine's gloves that ended up influencing what I did with the dress, rather than the dress affecting her. I decided that to knock down the brightness on this dress, I would order some black fabric dye and see if I could go a uh, darker or at the very least more neutral route. My thought was that if I used any other color, it might not cover the bright colors as well, but black would be the most likely to succeed. So I ordered this little tie-dye kit that came with gloves, rubber bands, and of course, black dye. After adding some water, about half of the bottle or so, just to get the dye activated, I capped it, shook it up, and then inserted the dress into the bottle and filled it the rest of the way to the fill line. I didn't want to fill it up all the way at first in case the addition of the dress made it overflow. Then I let that soak in the dye for a while. This was the dress after I removed it from the black dye and blotted off all the excess dye with a paper towel. It actually looks pretty good here. I like the gingham and how it now almost looks like purple and gray instead of pink and white. So I put that aside in the plastic packaging from the next item I'm going to show and let it sit overnight for the dye to sink in. The next item is this pair of white socks with a lace trim. I still wasn't entirely sure what I was going to do since I didn't know how the dress would turn out in the end. So I figured I would dye one sock with the black dye as well to see how that looked. That way, if it came out awful, I still have one white sock to use. So I removed the lace first and then proceeded to put one sock and one piece of lace in the dye, soak it for a while as well, blot off the excess with some more paper towel, and then I was left with this, which I also wrapped up in the plastic packaging that these socks came in. While that sat overnight, I figured I might as well get on with the face up. Taking Catherine, I removed her hair before soaking her head in some water to soften the vinyl so it could be removed more easily. If you think this step is unnecessary, then please refer to my last budget custom, the eBay edition, to see why it is absolutely necessary, at least for me to do, and I will always and forever do it from now on to remove or replace heads no matter what. Anyway, once the head was off, I used this crochet hook which was the largest one in the set of eight that I ordered, to rub the inside of the head while the glue was still warm and soft, and pulled out chains of plugs to clean out the inside of the head. To get the last bit out, I ended up cutting open the head with this box cutter, and I pulled out the plugs that way. Now, this was the only acetone I could find on all of Wish. It is a combination of acetone and ethanol according to the bottle, but I couldn't find anywhere that said what the percentages were, so I basically just hoped there was enough acetone that it would take the paint off of the face. However, that was in vain. As you can see, this stuff is not taking the paint off. So since I'm not actually using this, since it didn't work, I'm not counting it in my total amount spent. Also, don't try to use this if you see it, because it doesn't work. <laughs> Alright, so the, since this acetone wasn't cutting it, I decided to try out something I have never done before for a custom. Inset eyes. I found these 12 millimeter doll eyes that were also a random color, which ended up being yellow when they got here. 
as well as a kneaded eraser. I know that normally you use silicone putty to hold inset eyes in place, but I heard that you can use a kneaded eraser, so I figured I would give it a try. After carefully and painstakingly cutting out spaces for the eyes in the doll's face, I very, very carefully thinned the edges as best I could so that the white plastic wouldn't create such a hard, thick lip once the eye was inserted. After that was done, which was quite a process in and of itself, I set the eyes aside and took the set of acrylic paint along with the brushes that were included and another small set of brushes and added thicker eye makeup as well as black eyebrows. Since I had no acetone to remove the cat nose, I very carefully used the box cutter to shave off a very thin layer of vinyl at the bottom of the nose to remove the purple paint. Once that was done, I added black lips with the acrylic paint. And after letting that dry for a while, I added these individual false eyelashes to the openings I had cut out for the eyes. To adhere them, I tried to use a tube from this large pack of eyelash glue, which seemed to be some sort of PVA glue, but it didn't tack up quickly enough for me. So I switched to this B7000 solvent-based glue, which did not react badly with the vinyl, as some solvent glues do, so that was lucky. Once I got the individual lashes to stick where I wanted them, I went back with the lash glue on one of the small brushes and added a liberal amount on the underside of the eyelashes as well as on the top of the eyelid to make sure they were stuck well in place. It was a little bit messy and imprecise, but it did get the job done. The lashes did hold in place pretty solidly. Once that thick layer of glue was dry, I noticed that it was sort of cloudy rather than being perfectly transparent, so I went back over it with the black acrylic paint again to cover that up. Alright, after that was dry, it was time to insert the eyes. I put them roughly in place before mashing some of the kneaded eraser into the head to keep them where I put them, and then I used the large crochet hook again, this time to press the eyes into an expression that didn't look like pure derp. Once I managed that, I touched up the lips with some more black paint because turns out this acrylic paint isn't particularly durable and it started to flake off immediately. After that, it was time to close up the head a bit. I used this upholstery repair kit to sew the pieces of the head back on. I had cut them off to make it easier to inset the eyes. However, I left the middle section open just in case I needed to adjust the eyes a little bit because I noticed as I was sewing that since I had to squeeze the face a little bit to insert the needle into the vinyl and make stitches, that meant that the eyes kept being moved into derp expressions because the kneaded eraser shifted and changed shape when I squeezed the head particularly aggressively. It was easy to adjust them with the crochet hook again as necessary, but I still had to leave that opening so I could do it. The last thing I did was use some absolutely atrocious smelling paint on ceramic nano coating sealant I found to seal the lips. I was a little afraid to put it elsewhere on the face until I knew how it reacted to the acrylic paint, especially after what happened last time. Spoiler alert, uh, don't use this stuff. It also makes the paint flake off, and it's like a billion times more toxic smelling than MSC. All right, now that the face up is done, let's do the shoes. I got this pack of doll shoes, five different colors of the same mold, a sort of strappy sandal boot. Since at this point, I was really liking how that dark purple and grayish gingham was looking on the dress, I had decided to go the sort of more gothic route, 
So I used the black pair of shoes, and the first thing I did was change the shape. Using the box cutter, I shaved off the back of the heels and cut off a few sections and shortened them to about an ankle boot height. I decided that I wanted these to be wedge sandals, so I took some of the leftover kneaded eraser and stuffed the section between the heel and the front platform to make one solid piece. Once that was filled in, I took the paper packaging from the socks and traced the bottoms of the shoes onto it before cutting out the soles with the box cutter and using the B7000 glue to attach them. Next, I took the smallest crochet hook from the eight piece set along with embroidery floss. This is a set of 15 random colors of embroidery floss and of all the colors, I used the light gray, dark gray, and black to make chains and glued them onto the heel of the shoe with another tube of eyelash glue. And after they were dry, I painted the soles with the black acrylic paint. It was here I decided she needed socks, so I made some out of the white lace from the sock that I didn't dye by cutting out the shape of her foot from two layers of lace, sewing down the sides and across the bottom in a sort of U shape. And then, after putting them on her to make sure they still fit a little bit loosely, I turned them right side out using a crochet hook. I sewed them with the white embroidery floss from the set of embroidery floss so the stitches would be less visible. It was a bit of a struggle to get the shoes on over them, but they did go on eventually. And after that, I took a set of assorted nail art gemstones, which I unfortunately didn't actually get any video footage of, so I will stick a picture of the little pot up here. It had four metal roses, some assorted crystals, little gold studs, just different things for nail art. And using the B7000 solvent glue, I added some to the shoes. Okay, back to the crochet thing. <laughs> so the light gray, dark gray, and black embroidery flosses I talked about? Well, we are going to bibbidi-bobbidi-boo them into a vest. Okay, okay, so it wasn't magic. I, I actually created a prototype out of colors of embroidery floss I knew I wasn't going to use on this doll. And then I wrote out a pattern and then made the final version. Would uh, anyone be interested in the pattern for this little vest? I give it black sleeves later off screen made of the black thread from the upholstery needle set since by the time I decided I wanted sleeves, I was out of black embroidery floss. You will see sleeves in the final pictures. They're a sort of three quarter length sleeve with a little bit of a flare at the end. Anyway, I would be willing to write out a crochet pattern for this sleeveless version, as well as the one with sleeves, and post it on my Etsy shop for like a few bucks if anyone would want it. Uh, let me know in the comments. Anyway, so magical vest aside, remember the dress I soaked in dye and then let marinate overnight? Well, I rinsed it under running water until the water ran clear, and this is what I looked like. Yeah, it's less visible on the video, but in real life, it did make the blue trim much more muted. So I think that part looks better, but yeah, we're gonna have to move on to plan B for that neon pink gingham. So first things first, I cut off the sequins with the box cutter, and then I picked up the dyed sock, which turned this dark gray color after I rinsed out all the excess dye in the same way I did the dress and I cut four pieces out of the middle section. After sewing them together in a long strip and then sewing that strip into a loop, I gathered the top edge to make a skirt. And I did all of this with the dark gray embroidery floss since it is a very similar color to what the dye ended up doing to the sock. I slipped that over the top of the dress and sewed it in place around the waist. After that, I used the gray embroidery floss to sew a whip stitch around the edge of the skirt. Because I wanted to crochet an edge on the skirt to make it more interesting, but I needed something that I could crochet stitches into. Once that was done, I used the dark gray embroidery floss and the smallest crochet hook again to crochet in the loops of the whip stitch all the way around the bottom of the skirt. Two single crochets in each loop. Switching to the black embroidery floss, I did a double crochet, chain two, skip a stitch all the way around. However, I didn't have enough black embroidery floss, so I ended up switching to the black thread that came with the upholstery repair kit once I ran out. And honestly, you really can't tell the difference unless you actually touch it. It's a pretty good match. 
After that row, I did a little decorative pico edge, three single crochet, chain three, slip stitch into the most recent single crochet all the way around. I put a piece of white paper behind my work here so you could see a little bit better what I was doing. As for the bodice of the dress, I decided that since I made the vest, it didn't really need to be too fancy, and the color was fine how it is, now that the blue was muted down. So I took the black and white acrylic paint and painted a subtle gradient from the black at the neckline all the way to a light gray at the waist. It needed two coats in order to be fully opaque and cover that bright pink gingham. Once that was done, I decided the dress was still a little too plain, the more embellishments and small details you can add, usually the nicer the overall composition looks. I mean, that is until you reach a certain threshold and then it starts to become too much, but... Well, I definitely wasn't there yet, so... I took the lace edging from the sock that I dyed with the black dye and cut off the top edge so I was just left with the scalloped bottom and the netting. I left it in the original circle, and all I did was gather the top edge until it fit the waist of the dress, put it over top of the gray skirt that I had just attached, and sewed it in place. I was pretty satisfied with how the dress was looking. However, I didn't like that you could still see the pink skirt if you looked at the dress from straight on, so I needed something to cover that bottom little section of pink above the blue ribbon. I settled on taking the top lace edge I had cut off from the dyed sock, and sewing that around the skirt just above the bottom blue ruffle. And once again, I don't have a picture to show you. I'm not sure where the video footage went. I really thought I had some, but anyway, I glued on embellishments from the nail art gems I used on the shoes, including the four pink roses I talked about, and one of the flat back pearls, the same that I used on the shoes. You'll see it in the ending pictures as well. All right, so now we are on to what should be the last part of the doll. Woohoo, home stretch! Except, remember how in the beginning I said that I had some technical issues with this doll? And have you noticed that so far things seem to have been running pretty smoothly? Well, that's all about to end. It starts off fine. This is the hair I got. It is a wavy ombre that goes from blue to a mint green. And I decided to use my solvent-based B7000 glue to attach the wefts to the scalp. Again, fine, it doesn't react with the vinyl the doll head is made of, and it tacks pretty quickly. So I painted the scalp light blue and glued the wefts in place. I tried to put a part in the middle to cover up that opening on the top of the head that I wasn't able to sew up, and I tried to style it into pigtails, but the wavy hair was too unruly to flatten down neatly like I wanted it. So, I decided to boil wash it. This is when I wish alarms and flashing red lights had gone off, saying, Warning! Warning! Terrible idea! Terrible idea! Abort! Abort! Because after I poured boiling water over it, two terrible things happened. One, the hair became frizzy, which happens when it is not heat resistant enough to be boil washed safely. And the second and much more devastating thing was this. The solvent glue melted and partly slid off and let go of some of the wefts and just made a huge mess. I was so sad. First, a face fell off in my last budget custom, and now the hair falls off and gets all gross and gluey in this one. I tried to go in and fix it with more glue, but I just could not get it to lay down neatly. And yes, technically the hair was laying down flatter now, but it had this frizzy, poofy texture to it now. It, it was just a disappointing mess. I almost gave up right here, but I was so close to being done. The hair was the very last thing I had to do. Eventually, I managed to get it pulled into two low pigtails using rubber bands that came in the tie-dye kit. So the hair at the bottom looked okay, but the top, the top of the head looked awful, and I didn't know how to fix it. And so 
I decided I'd go all in on the gothic Lolita and make a bonnet for her to wear. I took the toe of the dyed sock that I had cut off when I was cutting rectangles for the skirt and gathered the edge with some grayish blue embroidery floss until it fit neatly on top of her head. I found that actually this color embroidery floss was very similar to the color of the dyed sock, even more so than the light or dark grays that I had used to crochet the vest. So I used this color to make the bonnet because I had in fact used all of the black, light gray, and dark gray embroidery flosses by this point, since making a hat was never part of my original plan. After that, I did some more Presto Magic and had the large curved bonnet brim. Okay, no, I made another prototype out of more colors I wasn't going to use on this doll and planned it out a little before I made the real one in the gray-blue. Once I put it on the doll's head and figured out where I wanted it to go and how I wanted it to look, I sewed the brim onto the gathered cap. After that, I added a pico edge around the brim to match the edge I had put on the skirt with the black thread from the upholstery repair kit. Though it is a smaller, more condensed version of the peacoat since the brim of the hat is smaller and more delicate than the skirt. I then crocheted a black band that will serve as the band on the hat as well as the tie to keep it on the doll's head. And this used up the rest of the black thread from the kit. I'm just running out of supplies left and right. I added the last little bit of white lace I had left from the white sock cuff, gathering it and sewing it on the back of the bonnet like a veil. Off camera, I crocheted a white flower and some green leaves from the other embroidery flosses in the pack and added them to the front of the bonnet for some more embellishment. I would have preferred a bright pink, like the color of the four roses I added to the front of the dress, but I didn't have any embroidery floss in that color and I didn't want it to clash with a color that was similar but not quite right. So I ended up just using the white so that it would contrast but still match since I also didn't have any black left either. Finally, home stretch. I added some nail polish in the bright pink acrylic paint from the set. And then, since the sealant seemed to eat away at the black acrylic paint on her lips, I touched up the lips as well. And once her makeup was back together again, the stall was finally finished. Wow, two disasters, two budget dolls in a row. This was definitely another challenging challenge doll. I like the end result, even though I know her hair is a mess underneath that cute little bonnet. Speaking of the bonnet, I guess I could also write up a pattern on how I made it, as well as the little rosette flower and leaves. If you would be interested in that pattern as well, let me know in the comments, and if I get enough people that are interested, I will write it up nicely and make it available on Etsy. Anyway, final thoughts on this doll? Uh, I definitely need to learn to test hair to see if it is able to be boil washed before just pouring boiling water over it like a complete doofus. And glue. Should probably also test glue if I'm going to boil wash hair to see if it can withstand the temperature as well. Lesson learned for next time. Anyway, despite the mishap with the hair, what do you think of her? I think she turned out really pretty, actually. Those yellow inset eyes are kind of haunting. I think they make her look like she's worth way more than $40 in materials, even with her jacked up hair. I also made two tiny white bows from the leftover edge of that white lace from the sock and put some white embroidery floss in the middle to cinch it up before gluing them on top of the rubber bands just to cover them so it didn't look so plain. She has a lot of little details and accessories, much like Suzette did. Oh, uh, speaking of names, let's call her Cursiva, which is a style of gothic black letter. Sounds kind of spooky. And she's definitely a little spooky. 
I feel like she's definitely someone you'd find seated delicately at a mausoleum with a basket of books at night, reading in the moonlight. I really like her mostly blue-gray, monochromatic, almost grayscale look with a few pops of pink here and there. Going into this doll, I really had no idea what I was going to make. Collecting supplies with her took forever because I ordered them in parts. You'll notice I ordered quite a few things that were random or assorted. Once I got the dress, I decided I needed the black dye. After I found out the acetone didn't work on the face, I ordered a random color of 12mm eyes. I ordered random colors of embroidery floss. I got random colors of five assorted shoes. All the randomly colored things had to be ordered and get here, which took several months, so that I could see what I had and then decide what else I needed to bring it all together into a cohesive outfit. It was really quite a process. I think I finally received all the parts to make this doll in May, and I have been ordering since well before last May. So these parts have definitely taken over a year to get to me. And a lot of that had to do with having to order in various stages. Oh, speaking of which, the grand total for this doll ended up being $39.26. And that includes shipping. Wish.com has a lot of quote unquote free items or very cheap items but then you end up having to pay for shipping on top of that, which can be very expensive. So I included shipping costs in these totals as well, because otherwise I would have been able to keep buying forever and spend a small fortune on this doll, which is not what I wanted to do. The point of a budget custom is to make it for as cheaply as possible. But yeah, anyway, uh, let me know if you'd be interested in those crochet patterns for doll sized items and I will see what I can do there. Uh, please subscribe and like this video if you like doll customizations, uh, especially the budget custom series. I have a lot of fun with this one, but right now I think I only have one more planned. So if you can think of any other places that I can get inexpensive supplies and might still be able to get everything I need to customize a doll, let me know and I will try it out. I know in my last doll customizing video I said that I would have a sealant comparison up soon, but unfortunately because of everything going on in the world I am still waiting for a couple of the aerosol sealants to make their way to my house, so that video is a bit delayed. Also I had plans to make a mermaid doll for Mermaid, but that sort of went a little by the wayside. I have most of the supplies for the mermaid doll I had planned at this point however, so let me know if you would still be interested in seeing a mermaid even though Mermaid is long over. <laughs> Also, in case you didn't know, if you are watching this video before July 15th, 2020, please check out my huge Copic sketch giveaway, where you can win one of 12 prize packages, each including a set of Copic sketch markers, a Crescent Render No Bleed drawing pad, and a bunch of other goodies to start your illustrating journey. Anyway, uh, until the next video, I will see y'all later. Bye.